you get a Zoom? Do you get a Zoom invite, or are you just typing in the meeting number? Mm -hmm. I just go on um, uh, ThinkItLanguage.com and I go to the classes, and then I go to the advanced class. And if you scroll down there, it says um, join meeting by clicking here. And the word here uh -huh. is on there. And when I click it, it, it brings you me. in. Okay. So you don't have to re try to remember the number or the password. or You can copy it and put it in your calendar, which I should do because I keep looking for it every time too. Yeah. You just put it, click it on your calendar and then uh, it, you can have the password there too. I always, I always look up the email. I got it. I just type it in. I have all kinds of Zoom numbers, and I wonder, okay, which one is current? Oh, okay. Sheesh. Uh, let's um do a little check-in. Just uh, say hi. Just tell us one thing about language learning, how it's going, anything like that. And then just tell us one other thing, just whatever you want. We'll make it kind of fast so we can move into the language stuff. But I, I think it's important every now and then just to put our finger on the pulse of the group and just see how it's going. Is anybody panicking or frustrated with anything? This is a good time to sort of figure those things out. Um, because every now and then we got to dip back into the well of confidence eternal and uh, drink some of the water in there. So, um, yeah. Everyone we'll go first. Uh, I like the translation exercise and having that um, column where I could type in the words that I already figured out. Whole bunch of uh, hoots, hot, hot. I got that, got that, got that. And then uh, it was, I didn't get too far, but I was so relieved to at least recognize some words in each line. It, can. it used to be that it was just too many letters. Too, I couldn't figure out anything. So, uh, and Something else I'm going to say, just non-Tlingit related, is I'm trying to enroll in a Zoom Tai Chi class. Oh, yuck. Yeah. Jock told me about it and sent me the, the paperwork. I want to talk about that translation exercise also. Um, doing the same thing, I just went down there, just looked at every little box and just whatever words I knew, I just put them in there. And then I started actually looking at some of the verbs and at least realizing that, okay, you have to look at the them and then oh I wonder if that's a classifier you know that's about as far as I can go but I did look up a couple of stems and figured out oh that verb is and new new verbs to me you know because they're walking around or going places and stuff but so thank you for telling us do it by yourself for a while <laughs> because you know, I started to make short work of that, you know, <laughs> but doing it by <laughs> for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that's good. Uh, and um, my non talking about Tlinga is um, uh, Yana, can I, I'd like to tell this whole story in Tlinga, but I just can't right now. Um, okay. So, the, uh, wait, do. Oh, Yana ate Duhuch gave me a plant called Daphne. And he gave it to me. It was really little. And luckily, Achuch, my husband, kept noticing I wasn't watering it. So it lived and it lived. And now it's huge. 
So I sent her a picture of it the other day and said, ask Iho. Um, so I put it in the ground now. Is it, you know, is it ready? Can I leave it in the pot? She writes back, that's not a Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow the plant, the Daphne died apparently, and the foxglove jumped in the pot and took it over and flourished. <laughs> and then did foxglove. And uh, Ishan Daphne is no more, apparently. Anyway, that was embarrassing, but funny. <laughs> I'm sure Mark laughed. <laughs> he, did uh, said, he said, um, uh, uh, Daphne Yeti, Juno, uh, um, he, he has some. Manganines, uh -huh. um, Kashke, Juno, Fagut, then you can take some home with you. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> you have to quarantine it to so keep that foxglove out. <laughs> oh, oh, so, um, um, yes, yes, hook, yes, hook, uh, hachiwo. Um, oh, okay. Yagi yi. It's um, a, gua, a, gua, a little bit thicker. Okay. And um, I have to see what the differences are. Exciting. Yeah, not most type of. <laughs> Whoops, you're frozen. Oh, there you are. Oh, uh, yeah. Mostly just typo fixing. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of updated things, um, which I'll, I'll share with you folks, just really finer debates going on about whether there's two nas and two guz. And I used to think there was, but now I think there isn't, so. <laughs> and well, this, is, this is related. One of the things that um, Satuk, uh, a lot of us have done is gotten the binding, this ring binding put on our verb dictionaries because they're old and the I'm and I'm thinking I might get this one done while it's brand new because my old one is so abused that a few pages are coming out already. So it's properly used. It's properly used. Yes, it is. Ka <laughs> uh, um next this Thursday I'm going up to Anchorage with Ka. Uh, to see um, do 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 each do each. Okay. Bridge. So I'll be gone for five days, but I hope to see some fall colors up in the interior up near Anchorage. So watch. But I will. I'll be checking in and either watching recordings or watching class. Okay. Peace. But uh, Yana H was saying she got a new husband, but it was just a book. Okay. <laughs> I don't say it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they have them on Amazon. New husbands. These folks, Kate and Donna. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a sec. So, huh, huh. Is book. Cook, cook, cook. Pinch, pinched X. Yeah. Cook, cook is a book. Cook is a husband. Underline X is your husband. Ah. Uh. Cook. Cook. And cook. 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 Okay, this is squeaky. Practice. Cook. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, these are important things like seek and seek. Yeah. <laughs> There's a belt behind you. No, I mean a bear. <laughs> I'm done. Anybody else want to share? Just quick check in. How's the language stuff going? 
one non-language related thing? been listening to a lot of audio and it's part of the program and sometimes it's just listening to audio is, is all I can do and I want to hear it all the time you know and kids listen to it and I don't know how to listen to it and take notes while I'm trying to keep doing what I'm doing stop what I'm doing obviously but um how to to use it I guess more um I know I want to, I try all the time to speak, just sing it and then we get to where it's just easier to say in English real quick. I'm trying to get it across real quick. Get on to the next thing I'm doing and it's tough. Okay. Um, yeah, there, there's a, it's, there's a lot to that. Like you, you could listen to the same one over and over, which is helpful, but then sometimes you want something new but it's, it's a little different than sort of like listening to music because you're trying to absorb everything that's in there. And then if, if you're carving or, or doing anything else, I, I think it's totally fine. But then sometimes you got to sort of just keep a notebook maybe and just jot stuff down real quick. Just be like uh, two minutes, 37 seconds. I, I need to go back there and, and listen to that because I think I caught something. And then just find a time where you can go back to it later. Uh, because sometimes it's there in the background, which is good because it, it just becomes part of your life. But then if it's too far in the background, then it, there's the threat that it just becomes noise. You know, and I don't think that's going to happen, but to to be able to come back to it, um, I think just having a notebook to jot down some stuff really fast and go back and listen to specific parts of it is helpful. And then sometimes it's helpful to listen to the ones that you have the translation for. Uh, just because then your English brain already knows what's there and then it serves as this nice sort of glue to push those pieces together a little bit and to fill in a lot of the blanks like the talk uh, or any of those. Yeah and I hear like every time I, I've been listening to the same one um, it's a uh, date Hoon telling a story about a, a giant crab a giant octopus and I'm picking up a little bit more every time I listen to it because I'm just listening to the same one over and over again. And I catch something new and I'm like, oh, hey, I know what they're talking about. And I didn't write it down. So it's kind of like fell to the wayside until, you know, I'm listening to it again. And I started trans transcribing it in Adobe Premiere, but again, getting back to it and making time with everything else. So. Uh, seen. Um, another thing you can do is say if you're burping, you know, so you're busy with stuff and you're just listening. You mm -hmm. can say it while he says it. I mean, you might be just a millisecond behind what he says, but you can talk right along with it. And then, you know, you're getting. That's yeah. Normally that's what I'm doing. Uh, like when I'm carving or working on anything, I'm, I'm saying it along with it. Mm. That way I'm still yeah, well, doing whatever I'm doing and at least saying it the way they're saying it. Mm -hmm. He's speaking. Um, he's Chu Canadian. You know, it's, for me, it's awesome to hear another Chu Canadian speaking because there's not many that I know of. Which is awesome. And I guess uh, one language that I've been kicking this little model around for a long time. I keep walking by it. And it's getting there. It floats. Yeah, okay. That's all I got. It's okay. Yeah. But, um, Achtuasigu Yuxatini, we play, um, oop, it's at Huain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ajoe Achtu Yak E Yayagi. Yay. Um Yeah. I was wondering um how I would say I want to show you. So I looked it up. Achtuasigu Achle Ku Ye Wak Shi Shi Yik and then what? Um a carry Yeah. And in the in um, this book here, they said awati, but so how would I say it for me? 
How do you carry something full of a container full of things? Oh, okay. Um, Anybody? In. In. Okay. That's a really boss Pyrex you got. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so language study is going pretty good, I guess. When I'm out in the bush or the forest, I um, sometimes think about how to say things in Shingit, such as Wei um, Askutu Shitsa, and you know, just different things. I took a look at the um, translation exercise and um, it's good. I find sometimes the most difficult things are all like the little words and how they go together to make meaning. You know, like the verbs I find are fairly easy to kind of look up and figure them out, but it's all those other little words that, that just go together to make meaning. So that's a little bit of a challenge, but it's good. Yuck, eh? It's I'm enjoying the, for the most part, the translation. Uh, I have seen it before. I'll, I'll tell you that uh, up front, but I haven't been uh, chatting yet. Uh, but, but like, uh, it's the same thing. The, um, the the small words like asiyu or hutch are the ones that take me uh, forever to find it uh, where a, a lot of it I can kind of chunk it a bit and I'm, I'm trying uh, not to look up as much not not to rely on the dictionary quite as much as uh, but um, uh, and I, I think the beginning too uh, that part of the story we've we've seen in other stories eh? so I mean that's that's really uh, helps uh, in a way um, so I, I was just uh, saying uh, Tom Peters eh? he has uh, where the two words that I'm having the most trouble with he says touch touch sha I see you um, they were really mountains, eh? but it doesn't really fit the way this one is. Uh, it, it's not a, a, a clean fit, hey. Eh? So, uh, but anyways, it's all it's all good. Uh, um, uh, he borrowed my truck to go up the uh, dumpster uh, this weekend. Um, Yatsutat Jisk I Unt. They they got a, a moose this morning. So I I'm hoping I'll have to leave class early tonight. Um but <laughs> uh, my my uh, my Zoom is a bit fuzzy tonight too. But uh, uh yeah. Uh that day away. Yeah, Oh, go ahead. Chi that's a fall colors uh, up in um, Quant Lane. Kunak Yake. Quant Lane, excuse me. Kunak Yake. Ye dat. Aftu Gu Wei As Quasatin. But I can't. <laughs> yeah, why? Okay. Uh, the T, the, it's really cool. There's the, um, so if you say like, it's like I shot at it. And then you take the T off, I shot it. Okay. So, yeah. I do so too. That in the chat. Oh. 
คดเกะเออเอออีกเอ๋อาคุยอะทัศวาสอุทิเวอยู่ขทางที่อ่า the cool the cool thing is is my daughter at this point knows more than I do so she's like reteaching me some stuff um I kind of fell off for a while there, but I, I have a pretty high threshold for pain, so I'm I'm not going to quit language learning. <laughs> um, but I I really appreciate this class and and everyone in it for like making that safe language space. I think it's going to help a lot. Um, so yeah, good to teach. Okay, good to teach. It's fun. It's fun speaking to think it with kids because then they'll catch all your little mistakes. Like upstairs, downstairs, I just. For a long time, I could just—I would just always reverse them in my mind. So I'd be like, "Hey, Chantu d e n a k u She said, "We are upstairs." Oh, mm-hmm. well, the other one. Then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you okay. So k a t h a t a g a Ah. Um. Ah, uh, yeah. d a k a n i k dehua sim on dehua k l e s sim d a k h u s t a n Um, I was working on that translation and that word "asiu," "asiwe." Oh, I looked and looked and looked, and then uh, I thought, "Oh, maybe Jeff Lear has it in Sam Johnson's stories." So I looked and looked and looked, and I finally found one. And uh, hado, Jeff didn't have anything for it. It just, <laughs> however, um, speaking of fall. Colors and picking berries. I don't know if you heard, but a Canadian uh, woman from Whitehorse went towards Skagway to pick Canada to pick berries, and so she went past the Canadian border facilities, just a little bit, you know, nowhere near the summit, nowhere near the states, and she picked berries. And when she tried to get back into Canada, they there was a big fuss, and they searched her vehicle and. Uh, She got back to Whitehorse, and she got a phone call from Ottawa saying she had to self-isolate for 14 days. <laughs> mm. For going near the border, or I guess into the the gray zone. Kona k u s h c h e o a y a w a s h d a n k o n on me. Okay. a t t o wait, d e s k e So um, we've been reviewing the Susie Jimmy tapes from 1969, and uh, my grandson absolutely adores them, and he understands it. So I'd like to really encourage people, even adult learners, um, download those recordings or at least. Uh, Save the webs. Uh, save the. You know, find them again, um, and they're 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 newly put up on the Sea Alaska Heritage website, and they're at the bottom of the pile. And it says, "Let's learn language." It almost sounds like uh, Satuk's "Let's learn s i n g i t but it's not. It's "Let's learn language." It was made in 1969, and the it's a puppet show, and. The speakers are Johnny Marks and his mother Emma Marks. Mm. That's Susie and Jimmy. Good luck. Huh? A sister. Good luck. Mm. Oh, he has a sister named Emma. Oh, Johnny's sister is Emma. Yes, oh, I always thought it was Nora's brother. John, that. Oh, wait, Jimmy. This is J- Jimmy, and that's why Jimmy is called Jimmy. Jimmy Marks. John Mar- Johnny. Johnny Marks. Is it Johnny Marks? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm getting my Jimmys and Johnnies mixed up. Yeah, but no, they're named Jimmy and Susie. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's Johnny and. It's uh, Johnny. What's that? Do a sock do l o v Eva, his Eva. sister Eva. Eva. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's Eva. And then uh, she was. Do g o o i k s h No. No. c h a k u t a t k a Do Gukwa was um, Linda. 
Oh, okay, Gunchish, Ewa. Uh, when that was made, there's a Simshan version and a Haida version, exact same puppet shows. I've seen the Simshan version. I don't know where the Haida one ended up. I've seen the Haida script though, because there is a, a book, booklets published for each one as well. So uh, the language in those is, is just awesome. Just really awesome. And if you want to know how to say, look in my pocket, uh, it'll teach you how to say that. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I thought I'd just encourage people to just check that out. And if you have little kids, um, uh, plug them in. <laughs> Turn okay. them on to it. Yeah, quite tea. I, I use those uh, videos every day at, at the daycare. I, I use them every day with uh, two, three, and four-year-olds. And um, I'm always I'm always learning a lot from them too. Like uh, I've got some of them memorized. I think you know they're uh, I've just heard them so often. Eh? But the, the kids love them. Yeah. Okay. Good night, Cheesh. So, Kaka, who chica? Okay. Yak eh, Johan, good night, Cheesh. One canin zach to us a goo. Woochin you a gach to shot at Yahayajani dad. Hosaku one panins tachet eek a ya shinkitch to this two. Wasa ach two chakai kaho. Was had to us a good jatling get enough you forgot to sha adi, ye go tea. Cut the cut ye a ya a digoody. Had a ya was yen ye jahwane we dacha away beginning thing at workbook, dacha away house and necha yu katangi. Ha we nich yen a good yeel we kuku ten plain. A plain yeel kutak ka yeel skasni ka ka ye ye tea. Had to how to shahidi. A ka away, a ka to a nick. Shed zee tachonach, jago kaku. Ka dlan awa hasu yukatangi. Ye away, one can in the dati jehwane. Hat would a tea shoa, a joe kesh kahu, ye hat ye tea, ye hat uti. A joe. When Panins just ud the car had ye in the teach. Kes Achtua Oshko ye jahane, when Panins. Hosako hoa at a tina hayeti conahoe ye scoo. A joe ye jah ye jetune way cook a dart. Hayetki cuckoo a ya. Way hard a day. Dukashi ye, ka ade ye adene ye. Ye awa ach to us ago, ya hayat ki ka ha in ak, has to in ak away, yis kuku aya has to ji ye wuti. A joe, kagach to ak, yis at zisk at loon, hat, a dad ye adene ye. Hosakutsu, Yukon Native Language Center, has outly yeh. A claim cook, a punachic a ya. Jog cock who punachoe has out shagook, a de yuk a yuk a dis at gea. After us a go o hansu, punachoe utusaku, ha utusagook. A gawe ye quati you hun. Ye two were duck. Ha eat a has to ji de gach to tea, ha yu katangi. Ye awa, one kanin za dat yu tachtatan. One ach sa we, kesh yu adush art, ya yi dat, ha yu katangi tin. Ye awa, one kanin za teen, 
has the yukatangi. The chaku dach ku ku chain nakashan kaski kash atk. Ye awa wasa wuk eya has to yukatangi. Aho an has to eat ayakar shahit we an katushiti at tin. Akawe achtu was a go, we yis uk ayakasaye has to yukatangi tin. Aho ah had nakaswo art. A joy achtu yenik nooch. Heshwasaka quati ko ah was a go, we at lame yetki. How you a tangi tin aya, ke has kako wat. Yeo achtu a tea, ya to a tlaki. Which a good at ko ah, yak achji woo ya yidat. Kastasa was a coo, we yak, dad coa. A joey we shayena, dad jijahane, one katua ark. We art a day or two a cook. We art a cuck a ya, yo two a hay, says a head ye. Bates who tart coa. Was a teen ha ya goo. Dark was a ha. Dark was a sha away, where keys. Ha! Cook away, ach yago. In shan. Tastasa was a coo at that. It's away, ya ach shayena ye in your aquatan. Go oil one. Getting a sharp way stale cut. What's your good luck? Wits it's a hit ye coa. Clear sending ark. Ho ach a yas to cut a dart. What shook wa a wake ak a eaty a wake hoosta. Ho nach away has a ku ek. Ye scar away ho ach. Tesh oka ach gin awa. Wasa ach toot ku a tea. Ach a cow a cow. A cowtle hate. Tessar to our usco or shantu he has ous in me. A joey crunch a archi ye with ye. Tess has to in you ach the tan coa. Tess was a coo. A day you has cashy at ki ye has to in. A cush to quani. Ho ach coa. Sat nach cashy nach chakuta. Joya wuji naya. K Wujin Aya K has o she A chi yach aya Ye a what do ach has to you a tungi Gut a joe has to to us a goo ach shantu he has our son eh Gook Ha in a go Hech was a goo a Kelkahwa ach Hasahwa achi Ye a wa ach yet ki in with its a hit A ka away Ye were ach to us a goon, we cook on a cock hook was she, ye ach una ye tin. Keskook sacko ach for good, a joe. We stick a tat in a way for ach we cushta, we to tat, sir, connach to tat, to for ach. Tehooch. The next day ach to us a go a co a keys. Dark was a harsh, I dark, I ya was a harsh, or where ach yago. The old act was a gui in Cahonigi, I yaki. Cheese a hate is a archic and cheese get dain ka ye arco. A you a tongue at his a yehe. Then it's cheese is gasnigi. Any questions about that, guys? Catch it, the gist. Was that that story you were saying when you went camping? Yeah, I had to say it again. Oh, ah, ek, And it, they say they whistle, but it just sounded like a weird song. It was like a, almost sounded like some kind of electric music or something, the way it sounded. Woke me up about 1.30. That's funny. Her on just it kept just going like on either side of the tent, like just going back and forth. 
I think the first time it was kuk, because it sounded like it, you know, if you're in a tent and you start hearing things, you kind of tell where it's at, because your, your ears just go into hyper mode. And it was up in a tree, but then the second ones were down in the ground. And my boat got washed up, drug the anchor all the way up. And so I was beached. So I was trying to get the boat back in the water and I was thinking about going hunting. But then I heard it, another one whistling down the, down the way. So I was like, nope, just going back to bed. Done, I'm gonna go home. But we still have fun. Hmm. We didn't talk about it till we were back home. Um, I was like, did you hear something? She's like, I heard something. I was like, okay, we'll talk about it later. So. <laughs> I don't want them to know, if I'm out there, I don't want them to know that they're getting to me, because then, I don't know, I just think about how they get you. Uh, is what they say when they, when they get you. And I think they make a whistle, and then you start thinking a thought somehow. So I had a tobacco, and I was ready. I wasn't ready and not like challenging them, but <laughs> all the things I was told to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tobacco, huh? Yeah, they don't like tobacco and they don't like copper. Mm -hmm. And they don't like, uh, if you're really in a jam, you could fart a stinky fart or pee your pants and I think they'll leave you alone. But <laughs> make sure that it's, you know, it's, it's not just some stranger in the woods, but, you know, do what you got to do. Those are the things that I heard anyway. So. Huh. Mm. Uh, hunting um, a cloon way, Conks Creek through Chichikov straights or just pass he went up there and he was hunting and he got a deer and he's packing his rifle and his deer and he couldn't find the way back to the beach he kept going in circles and my mom said he finally sat down put the deer down put the rifle on the log and started to walk and he found his way back to his boat but he had to leave the deer and the rifle and then just go down to the boat and leave. Hooch. Ah. Ah. Khatsi kho akh. Chishuku. At yach ke ti a. Wish kashnik. Wai qa. Ashun wu gud. Sha da a ya wu gud. Ka kudna khawe au shuku kastu ani. just Kashak <laughs> Kashak <laughs> Uh, as far as where to find more of these, 
Uh, there's the Downhower Finding Guide, which I guess uh, I should, what I'll do, I'll put that on our class page and then you can look for things that you're trying to find. I'm sure if you enter Otter, a bunch of stuff will pop up. Uh, and then I, I do think there's a book ready to be made, although it'd be scary to kind of make it, is Icht Sak Kakushta Kwanish Kashnikli. there is a short, there's a story by George Davis which you could find online where he talks about the Akushta that takes a baby. There's uh, one by Sam Johnston on Nashahash about a guy who hears a kushta singing a song underneath a rock. Um, lonesome, just lonesome for the town, for the town of the people's village. Where is the people's village is singing? Lonely for them. It's a complicated relationship. Uh, but I do think uh, there were some people who I think blocked that book from happening. So a, a book of how the medicine people become medicine people. Those are called Icht Sak Shkashnik. I could send you folks an example that Zeosh worked on, um, which is the one-horned goat, or Gukh Sak is what it's called. And uh, it's pretty hardcore. It's It's got some, you know, it's, it's about like how they uh, go to cut the tongues of animals. So basically they would fast and then this animal would emerge and then it would fall dead in front of them and they would go cut the tongue out and put it in the pouch that they would carry around and the most powerful one was kushta so they say kushta chuti awukhash and that's how you know they're they're trying to become a medicine person or they were becoming a medicine person cutting the tongues of those land otters and uh yeah it's from uh uh David Kadishan. But um, yeah, I think a book of those would be pretty fascinating. Uh, really scary stuff. There's, there's lots of other stories too about like just these odd things that happened uh, in all these different places. And, and I think back when Nora and, and Dick were really doing a lot of work in the 80s and 90s, I think there were some folks who were really against that stuff. Um, uh, so, um, but now I, I think one thing I did talk to Nora about was that a lot of them are gone now, the ones who were really opposed to publishing stuff like that because they thought it was against Christianity. This is really what it came down to. And, yeah, yana eight. Steotin awe hanakru good. Wasa achtu yeni kodat tsu. Ha eat with the she ah tach kunach. Yohan a do sashing gets to eat too. Was kalkawu aya do yuk a tungi to was a goo is a he. A two dahawe steotin. A day would to sakur. Katu ju yesaya a kaushahit. Wegao. Kesh uh, so Kathy Reddy passed away recently. Uh, her Tlingit name was Shteotin. Uh, and she really helped us a lot. Uh, if, if you like listening to Cyril George recordings, all of those were made possible by her. She used to drive him to uh, my classes and then we had this idea of asking him to tell stories. And he said, nobody had ever recorded him telling stories in Shingit before. And uh, she would drive him to where we were. He couldn't hear pretty much anything at that time. 
So she would write down everything that was said so that he could respond and she would write down all our questions so that he could read them and then he would respond. And then she really took care of his estate after he passed away. And then, um, and then she was really a contributor to the Sharing Our Knowledge Conference. She donated money to uh, this language program that we have right now. Some of the technologies that we're using are because she bought them. Um, and she was just a real supporter of uh, the types of things that, that we do. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge her and her life and uh, the awesome things that she did. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's uh, let's look at something a little different. So this this thing isn't perfect, but I was trying to think of how to start talking about like continuing a, a deep conversation about like hearing, listening, speaking telling and how to know which of those verbs to use in which situation. So uh, I'm looking for uh, how to say these things in Tlingit. Uh, do you hear me? Do you hear my voice? And can you hear me? Uh, Okay. And then, can you hear me? Uh, so, is do you hear my voice? And then, are you able to hear me? And they're slightly different. Uh, you know, so like, if we're on a Zoom call or something, and if I'm wondering if I'm cutting out or something, I, I think either one's probably fine. Um, are you able to hear it? And then, um, and so the, the, one of the big things is like this one here, you're looking at a sa thematic prefix to hear a voice, right? So this, this is the one at Kuih, they would say, um, it's not this one, right? They, they might say, um, we, we can hear your voice, but they'd usually say, we're listening to you. So the S classifier is going from hearing to listening. So it's changing the type of action. But the S at the front just means to hear a voice, right? So again, um, I hear that kushta's voice, as opposed to um, it would be if I hear it rustling around. Once it starts the singing, now I'm going to put the sa thematic prefix on there, which is different. Um, How does how is that one different from khat sewa akh or is that yeah so khat sewa akh would be she or he heard me talking or singing akh eight wusa akh she or he they listen to me okay so as the thematic you're hearing a voice and it's talking or singing right so the, the context is just kind of interesting. So for example, uh, someone might say like, I'm trying to concentrate, but I just hear you talking, right? So then that's the one that where they would say, um, I, hear, I hear your voice or, or the same thing. Like, can you, do you hear me talking? Yes, I hear you talking. Are you able to hear me? Like, so if we have a bad connection, then I would probably lean towards And then are you listening to me? We're going to get to the are you listening to me? Okay, what about um, you're going to hear me, you're going to hear my voice, and then you're going to hear me, like rustling around. Just so we could practice futures too. Uh, 
خد سقي آخ إن خد كقي آخ إن تقكي could be كقي right generally if the thing before it is ending with a consonant it's going to be كقي but what we're also finding is for Tessan speakers they prefer كقي pretty much every time as opposed to كقي right so this GA can become a K. But in this case, if there's a thematic prefix, it has to go K underline G E E. Okay. Sakri Kakri. So this is how we can see like this is that thematic prefix. Sa, it's a voice, it's this body part. It's almost always voice. Uh, but in the verb to decapitate, in that case, it's this part. Can you, can you um, s also have a sim simpler phrase such as um, the previous one? Yeah. Um, do you hear me speaking? Yeah, oh, that's what we did. Okay. Do you hear me? Can you? And then. So we're, we're doing the question and then the future. Uh, um, later, we'll do the commands. Right. Okay. All right. Sorry. No worries. Okay. Are you listening to me? Which could also mean, are you doing what I said? Are you obeying me? And are you taking the time to listen to me? Again, just finer points, differences between these things. Anybody got a prediction or know it? It's a good one to know if you're teaching, especially like kids, right? Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Kate is a uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I, I would probably put the ge right after Kate in this case, uh, but I don't, I think that's just a preference thing. Um, so now we get the se to listen to. So this, once the classifier changes from zero to S, we've gone from hearing to listening, right? So, so it's just different, sort of like uh, seeing and watching, the classifier switches for those. So the classifier will often switch to show like somebody's making the thing happen now. That's one of the main things that the classifier does, okay? Ach, eight, ake, yisa, ach. And then this one is like, so in, in the command forms, you say that to someone who you're saying, listen to me. Take the time to listen. And that's what the one you use for public speaking because it's, it would probably be considered rude to tell a bunch of people to listen to you. So this one is na conjugation. This one is zero. We learned about the perfective. They're closed. This one's short and high. This one's long and low. And this is, it's a weird thing to ask. You probably wouldn't. Again, if you're invited to speak somewhere in Tlingit, um, it is the Nakani's job to quiet the crowd if they're not listening. And if you're a Nakani, that's, that's your unfortunate business <laughs> because people might get angry, but that's what they pay you for. But you gotta do it nicely, right? There's nice ways to, but if you're, if you're talking like, if that's your clan, like just gabbing around while someone's giving a speech at, at your kuik, you can give it to them a little bit. Just be careful. Where does that go uh, plus D, the, the, the second one? Uh. Yeah, so this one, um, it's a plus. So taking the time to listen is gonna be plus D. So the, the com that's why the command form is So the command form is gonna go minus I. So in the minus I, um, 
So like the future, we should expect it to be just the letter S. But this is one where it's like, I'm taking the time to listen. So it's, it becomes a sort of the middle voice thing where it's sort of like, I'm doing the verb and the verb is affecting me type of thing. So some, some things are just naturally plus D, like conversing as opposed to talking. Because then you're listening and talking, right? Okay. Your so if you are if you're in a, a classroom and you're trying to tell the kids, your students, um, okay, everybody, listen up. So, do you not say "hade kiningis ah"? Hade, that's fine. Um, if they are your students, though, and you're trying to get a little bit firmer with them because they're they're doing stuff they're not supposed to, that's when you switch to uh -huh. or ah. Okay. Or you're dealing with your kids, you know, and so it's it comes back to the kinship chart, like the teachers up there too, and the grandparents and the parents. But if the kids say this to the parents, ooh, famous last words, right? But yeah, so the, so hade konyes ach or achet konyes ach, duchet konyes ach, those are usually considered just more polite, because like I'll take the time to listen. But then, because uh, could also be like obey, right? And so, but if the kids are getting a little out of control and you need to give them a light scolding, it's a good one. Or right? You have some guest speaker, and, you know. That's uh, a my voice or? Put your listening at my mouth. My mouth, okay. So okay. you can also, uh, like, I got a little confused. Like one time my elder came to my house and she said, and I just hadn't heard it like that before. But then once she said it the second time, it just made sense. So you could say, um, and so, uh, is to my mouth. So achetza uh, in would be uh, put it to my mouth, like literally, like achetza in hin, put the water to my mouth. But it's really give me something to drink. Right? So sometimes when you push the chet on there, you're talking about food or drink. Like uh, when Raven went down to the Nas and he saw those people fishing for driftwood, they were dip knitting for driftwood. He started yelling at them. Send me something to eat. Send me something to eat. It just might break the daylight on you all. And same thing, like when you see those killer whales in the water, or you see those hats, and when they bring the killer whale hats out, Sometimes you'll put tobacco on it and you'll say, achet, I will send us something to eat. So that uh, it, it it's literally, so is the mouth. So you go, but then because it's a mouth and people communicate and eat and stuff, sometimes it has special meaning. You are going to listen to me, or you will take the time to listen to me. Kind of bossy. So. Any predictions? I'm not sure about that plus D again, really. Um, uh, could, could get, could, could Okay, you got, yeah, you got the classifier right. We just gotta get the, uh, so with the second person, uh, we should get And so 
Oops, this should be long. Okay, so in the future, the second person will be short if there's a vowel in the classifier, long if there isn't. That's why it's going to be I or EE. -E. It's predictable. My internet is, un uh, internet is unstable. Unpredictable. <laughs> there we go. And yeah, and, and for kids, like sometimes you want to use commands and sometimes you want to use futures, right? So sometimes I'll say to my kids, you're going to be good. It's kind of a command, but then I'm not always giving them just the command form. Okay. Okay. Do you understand me? And do you understand? Idayage kushusige is the second one. Yeah, well. Tletchwasaku shukanicha. Mm. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, and is do you understand me? And so again, it they're they're just finely separated, right? So this is just like do you understand it? And this is do you understand me? You know, talking. Right, and so usually we hear this as and so it's it's the same thing, but it's just saying for like the human or for the clinket people, however you want to interpret that one. And so if I was talking, and I was looking at somebody's face, and it looks like they might be just kind of struggling, I might ask that, just as, and not to be mean, but just to say. I just, if I can explain to you if, if you need to, right? And then, do you understand? And, and so, conceptually, they're just a little bit different. This one's related to speaking and what somebody's saying. So it's talking about their language, right? This one would be like, if, if it was a concept or something like that. It could also work for like, I don't understand what's being told to me that they would both work, it would work for both of those. But this one would be really specific to like, do you understand what I'm telling you? Can you understand it? Okay. You will understand me and you will understand. Starts with hut. Yes. <laughs> it all starts with me. <laughs> Any predictions? Predictions are good. Okay. Uh, the CH will fall off in the perfective oh. and the future for, for some of these. And then the second one is sneak. You will understand. Chet chakriach ida ke ya kushukhsage. That one is extremely long. Extremely long. So there's a couple of really sneaky things that happen in this one. Uh, so this one, the CH does fall off right for the understand it does able to hear like it's pretty common that in the future it it'll just the ch will will go off of there sort of like the the t in um you you or the k sorry i, I would always want to put the k at the end of that 
but it should go away because it's not like a repetitive form. Ida, so here we got Ida, Ya, Kush. That verb means understand? Yeah. My goodness. So there's a couple things. It's a state verb, which is most state verbs are G conjugation. That means in the future, the K has to be there. This verb also has K. Ah. I'm unstable again. This verb also has K and SH, right? And YA in front, the YA is just built into the verb. So that's why it gets very long. K, SH. Then, because there's no actual subject in there, right? Ida, right? That's, that's the way we conjugate it. It's outside of the verb. So when we have any of these in the third, what would be the third person or without a subject, it's got to be guxa, guxa, guxa. So that's why ida, ke, ya, kushu, guxa, ge. It's very long. But when we're, what we're going to do is, is we're going to go back to this perfective uh, building exercise. Then we're going to do the future. And when we do the future, we're going to learn some rules that we'll see at play in this phrase itself. So in the um, there's got to be a you pronoun in the verb. Right? Where is it? Kaki. Kaki <laughs> is you are gonna or kaki. Okay. So we, we haven't done the future prefixes yet. But once once you the future is really pretty straightforward. <gasps> and it's gonna be the same every time. So it's gonna be kaki or kaki or um uh the classifier might change, but this component will still be there. So how is, what is, you all will understand me? Anybody know? It'll be gachye. Gachye every time. And gachtu will be us. Gachtu, ach, we're gonna understand. Like a half hour left. We're going to see it. All right. I'll wait. Okay. Thank you. It's coming. The future's coming. It's guaranteed. Okay. So those ones were ach verbs. Right? Just getting a few different sort of ach verbs. Let's take a look at some of the ka verbs. So this one is to say a specific thing. That's usually what it has to come down to. Am I muted? No. So basically, knowing when to use the nik verbs as opposed to the ka verbs, typically the nik is gonna say, they said this information. They gave us the news, they told us the story. It's all about the content. When you switch to ka, you're giving, you're putting it in quotations. This is what they said. This is what they said to me. Those, that's the main difference between those two. So whether you want to say like, thanks for telling me, thanks for saying this thing. Um, it's, it's again, it's just fine tuning. That's all we're doing at this point is fine tuning some of the differences between some of these. There are some extra verbs in here to learn. Uh, to send someone on an errand, to scold somebody, to speak plainly, to announce some information, uh, to give orders, to do work, and uh, to uh, instruct, to, to give them, to tell them to say something. But those, are a little, those ones are more unusual, right? Yawaka, ye yawaka, and ye ayawsaka are the two common ones we're going to see here. Uh, so here's, here's a few others. Okay. Um, 
make a promise, to name the price of something, uh, to criticize, uh, and also to insult somebody. But then you'll see like, once you learn how to build these, um, again, we'll start with the most common ones. So. But with that last group, the classifier changed, huh? From zero for the last batch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so usually when I'm putting these into order, I'm doing the zeros first, and then the S, and then the L, and then the SH, and okay. then I have the thematic prefixes, and so um, that's usually how I'm putting these together. Okay, good enough, Chish. Good observation. So this one will do. Oh, go ahead. Um, back to the understanding. Sorry to jump back there. I'm wondering what's the difference between Achtaya Kushusige and like Koshiguk. What's the the difference in understanding there? Yeah. So uh, understanding is is sort of like um, uh, let's say somebody explains something. Uh, and they said, do you understand? And then you're, you're focused on the content. For example, like if you explain to me how to paint a picture, and then if you ask, do you understand? It's like, oh yeah, I understand how to paint a picture. But that doesn't mean I can paint a picture, right? For like Northwest Coast art. Like if I, under I understand how it gets put together, that would be achdaya um, kushusake. I can understand how they do it. Khwasaku would be, I know about it. I know how these things go together. I know how, I know uh, what these things represent. Khwasakuk means I can do the thing. I know how I have mastered the task of it. So for me, that, that's, that's a good example of how these things go together. Like someone tells you, oh, how, uh, someone tells you how to do it. He's like, oh yeah, I understand. And then Khwasaku would be like, oh yeah, I know about it. Khwasakuk, I know how to do that. Okay, good question. Okay, so these ones will be a little bit different. So what I'm looking for is you said it and you are saying it with the ka verb. You said it. So yeah, ka. Yes, ye 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 ka. What about you saying it right now? This one's a, it's a trick question. This one's a little tricky because this one does the thematic prefix changes for the imperfective for some reason. Is it um ye ka ye ka ye ka? Yeah, well, yeah, well. Right, so well, right? Ye 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 ka, ye ye ka. So these are um, saying a specific thing, right? So you are saying these words. You said these words. This isn't like you told me this story. You told me this information. It's like no, you said put it there, right? And then, I don't know. It's gonna be an argument, right? So. Um, you said to get this thing, or you said, uh, you told, you said that nothing measures up to our language. Thank you. Now I know why we need it. Right? So, uh, the, Again, the, the yawaka is all about like this specific phrase, this specific thing. So it's said a lot in stories, but in the story, it's more like, it's not like, oh yeah, he went and told them that there was a whale on the beach. No, he went and said these words, okay? And then you got, for the third person, you'd say, ye yawaka and ye so this is one where the thematic prefix switches for the imperfective. Okay. You will say it. I will say it.
And if you don't know, just, just watch them because we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to the perfective, then we'll do the future. Um, we're using this to sort of, uh, nobody's testing anybody and what they know. We're just trying it out, seeing where we're at with some of this stuff, and then just showing you some of the patterns so I can, we can practice how to, how to build all these patterns. Yeah, 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 So, kaki, this is the you're gonna, kakwa, that's the I'm gonna. It's a really good starting point for the future. Kaki, kakwa, kaki, kakwa. Sheesh. You said it to me. You are saying it to me. And not you told me the information. That's the neek, right? You are saying this. You said this thing to me. Hey. Okay, away. So it's going to, they're going to start with cut. Well, there, there's probably going to be a yay in front of it. Yechat. So the difference between like saying something and saying something to somebody is going to involve a classifier switch in this case. That's the difference between yawaka and a yawsika. That's why there gets, that's why an object pops on there. The first one does not have an object. Yawaka does not have an object. So in this case, yechat yaisaka, or yechat yaisaka, you said it to me. You made the promise. You told me how much it costs. And then yechat dayaka. Again, so this one, it, it, for some reason, both of these, the verb changes in the imperfective. It's just, it's just one of those things that's sort of like, just gonna have to remember it. Which one doesn't have an object? What's that? I said, which one does not have the object? Yawaka. So both of these have an object. And that's why you'll hear people say, a yawsika and a dayaka. Yeah, a dayaka nuch. So that ah uh, has to be on there. But yeya waka, there's no object on there. So those, we, we use a third person example for that because that's where the ah uh, is gonna jump in. So, um, yecha da yeka is different from yecha da yeka. Yecha da yeka would be- He said it. Yeah. Okay. She or he is, is saying it to me right now. Okay. Sheesh. You will say it to me. I will say it to you. I'll start with yay. You or ye hut, um, ye hut yak is a car. Get away, ye hut yak is a car. Now, if we want to switch those, so I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say it to you. I should stop saying tell, I'm gonna say it to you. Yay. So then the chat changes to i and the kaki changes to kakwa. We gotta remember the thematic is in there, the ya. 
So the yeah can't change. In this case, it won't change. So once we start moving into like this dynamic language use where we're constructing this stuff, this is a lot of what we're doing. The mechanics of it is where we're putting things into future or perfective, then we're changing objects and subjects. So khat goes to i, and then kakke goes to kwa. So what will happen is you changed khat to i, and you changed i to kha. But because it's the future, there's a bunch of things that are all combining. So then it has to take these certain shapes, right? Ye khat yakkisaka. And it's an unusual thing to say. We're doing it just to practice and, and to see what these things are going to take shape as. And then, ye khat e yak kwasaka, or ye ik kwasaka, ye e yak kwasaka. I'm going to say it to you. I was so confused. And so here's the object, ya subject, right? But the, the actual order is going to be object, thematic, conjugation, subject, classifier. So because this is an S classifier, in the future, it must always be sa, right? Sa, sa, sa. Neek. Now let's do the neek. Information, right? To tell about, to give facts, to inform of something, to testify about. There's an object in there. Uh, to tell on, uh, to tattle, to betray. Throw K on the front. That's basically how it changes, right? K ikkakwanik. I can tell on you. Uh, to explain something, All right? So this one you have kunach dark gets added, right? Also, the conjugation type changes. So this one we know is akawanik. This one will be akawanik. Just little things we have to remember to tell the story of and just to tell stories or to preach. Oh, and there's also gossip, right? Um, but the, this is just showing you that there's a few others that are listed in the verb dictionary. Uh, argue and dispute, to have a prophecy, to predict something. Prime Minister. Yeah. Okay. You told it. And then you told it to me. Yeah. Kianique. Yeah, well, Kianique. Then you told it to me. The oh. intro. Would you say chet or achin? Achin. Achin. Mm. Yeah. So chet ki anik would be, you told about me. Oh, okay. I was just wondering because it had that object in the, uh, what do you call it? The. Yes. And so this is one where the object is almost always third person. Okay. Uh, but it could, if it switches, and in this case, like usually, like that's usually not a good thing. Like if, if I said khat ki unique, I'm probably mad because you're gossiping about me or you, you told them what I did. If, if you put the K in front of it, then it really is tattling. But this is what you'll find in those, those Raven stories. He didn't want them to tell about, he didn't want them to tell about him, right? But almost the ah uh is just the it, whatever the information is. So it's almost always third person in this case. But we have to remember it's there because at third person we're going to get a kawanik, right? 
Could you say that again? Go back and where was the it? The uh, is it e a uh, nik? That's where the uh, the it is. So when it's a third person to say like they told uh, they told it, right? You would say a kawanik, and that, that's that's very common, right? right? Ka in a kawanik. They told the people, and it's telling them information, telling them there's something there and it's usually just the third it's just it but you could change this right for if i said that, that's like i'm gonna tell people about you and it's usually like then it, it's usually because neek we know is news or gossip once this object switches to an actual person then it's usually getting into the telling on or gossiping about category. I'm just trying to figure out where the pronoun is and the verb. There's an object there, but just rem remember for this one, this is one of those blank in. You told it, the, first, the top one, kianik. Kianik, so there's an object there but it's a, it's a zero. So this is where, again, like you just get to remember in the theme that it's there. Huh. It's sort of like if I was gonna say, you planted it, it would be kiaha. Okay. Uh, uh, you will tell it, you will tell it to me. So most of these, when they're whether it's achit or achin, they will switch to achide for futures. Right, ach day. So uh, I'll say this. This is when I used to my kids quite a bit. I'll say keshi 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 I'm not going to tell you, but you know, I'm usually teasing them. Right? Where are we going to go? Keshi ide kakwanik. I'm not going to tell you. Right? So kakhi nik ach ide kakhi nik. Okay. Yuck, hey. uh, well, that's probably enough for now. Uh, I'll put the slides up to this point up. I'll also, what else did I tell you I was going to put online? The Downhower Finding Guide. Uh, so if you look through there and there's audio that you want to listen to and access, let me know and I'll, I'll put a link up for it. Do you have those um, puppets? On, on your website? No, but the, the state archives has them on theirs. And then SHI has them? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, I forgot. I did download my, uh, there's only one unit one on SHI. Mm. And I found it in VILDA, Alaska State Archives. I found it under VILDA um, and I just Googled uh, learn a language and then I spelled it funny like they did C-L-I-N-C-K-E-T mm -hmm. and it popped right up all of them but you can't get them all on SHI and uh, yes so let me put a link in the chat uh, if you want the downloaded versions of them. I think at some point we did most or all of them in Elon so that we were we were using them for practice. And it's yeah, C L I N C K E T. C L I N E. Uh, let's learn. Uh, 
Yeah. I think that's how they spell it. C L I N C K E T. Yeah. You gotta kind of force yourself to do that. <laughs> K E T. And here's one of them. And once you get to that build a site, you should be able to find all of them. You know, one of uh, one day we had this great class with people asking questions, and you've put all the questions in chat. You wrote them down, but um, the chat didn't show up when when we go to that class. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sure. I th okay. What I think I'll start doing is. Uh, I, I have the chat as a text file, so maybe I'll, I'll start linking that to our class web, web page so you can access the chat. Yeah, because some of us can't write it down fast enough, and I don't know how to save it. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, that's a good point. Goodness, cheesh. Mm-hmm. Because there's good stuff in chat sometimes. Okay. Uh, so Wednesday, let's do, uh, if you didn't get your 20 questions, think of something uh, that's on a mountain. I think that was our realm. And we're going to ask you yes or no questions. That's how we'll start the class. We'll just start off in Schengen, whoever wants to go first. And they, they have to be yes or no questions. And so um, if you ask an open-ended question, I might help you rephrase it as a yes or no question. And then we can guess at any time what we think you are thinking of, uh, but we'll just keep asking yes or no questions until we give up and then we'll say, we quit. And you gotta tell us. Any other questions or thoughts? Um, I just noticed at the bottom of the chat on the right, there's three dots and it says save chat. And um, so I did that and went to a file and I opened the text file. But the nice thing is that if he saves it, then we'll be able to get to the class and the related chat at the same time. Otherwise, you've just got the chats on your own computer somewhere. You hopefully can find them again. Yeah. Okay. And so I, I can just work them into the rotation because since I already have them, uh, it shouldn't be too much of an extra step to just upload that text file. It's really tiny. But yeah, that's a good one. You can save them too. Okay. Gonna cheesh. Wish you got to steam. Hang in there. If if this stuff was kind of tough, um, we are gonna backtrack a little bit and then build up. It's, it's like finer point stuff for just like Nick and Pa and Ach, um, Tan and Ot are coming up. So buckle your seatbelts. Um, but then you know we'll go back to the twenty question stuff and just. And then if you have any stories you want to share as well, uh, we'll start that with Wednesday. If you want to keep them scary, keep them scary. We'll keep it going. Then we'll switch to funny afterwards because that's just the logical flow is everybody gets scared. Then you're like, okay, now let's laugh. So we're not scared anymore. And then um, then we'll do something different. So, I just, I wanted to say that I think it's really good to have the prediction that you're doing now for us to predict what it would be okay and, and you'll you'll just get it with higher and higher accuracy until you said you just know it's it's fun stuff i like I, I like that you're doing second person because um a lot of times it's just first and third person that people do so it yeah it makes you think more or makes me think more anyways yeah yeah it's, it's a little more unusual but um but then the question, it started off by just sort of like, 
uh, I was hearing different versions of people and I was saying different versions of like, can you hear me? Do you hear me? Can you understand me? And so then it, it's, it started off that and I was like, oh, I should throw a future in there just for fun. So, okay. Katsuach tu wasi gukun el chish we elan let's learn language. Um, because I'm in the high school, I'm doing the, I'm asking them to watch and try to translate, try to understand, and, I, and they're going to, and they're putting it in English. And then I was thinking, okay, how do I go over this? And, and see, it, like we have short amount of time because we're online. And so it's like, okay, now I don't have to hold their hand. I'll just say, okay, you did that. You did finish the assignment. Here's the answer. Correct your own papers. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough cheese. You just saved me a hundred hours. Hooray. Okay. And if you find anything, just let me know. We could change it. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. I will. Diakin. Uh, See you. Plus 18. Good cheese. Yeah. Good cheese.